Hello everyone. Um, I want to start with, with a question the disciples asked Jesus. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. And in Luke chapter 11, he says this. This is how he teaches them to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in that prayer that he teaches them to pray, it comes to the matter of forgiveness. And we, we, in the prayer he said, we must say to God, forgive us as we forgive others. As we forgive, in the same way that we forgive others, we are asking God to forgive us. Forgiveness is possibly one of the most difficult parts of our Christian walk. And even though sometimes we forgive people, we don't even realize we bury that hurt deep in our hearts and it pops up later on. And sometimes we think we've dealt with it and we haven't really dealt with it. Many years ago, well, in 2013, my, my wife and I were in the Cape visiting our family and I got a call from my daughter saying that we had been burgled. Our house had been burgled. And they'd stolen both my computers with all my photos, all my mission work, all my documents on it. They'd stolen our TV, all my clothes. They'd ransacked the house. It was a, an invasion on our privacy. And the question I had to ask myself, was I angry? Yes, I was angry. But the more important question, was I allowed to be angry? And I say, yes, I was allowed to be angry, but with a proviso. In Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to look at verse 26, Paul says this. He says, in your anger, do not sin. In your anger. He didn't say, don't be angry. He said, in your anger, there is a righteous anger. Do not sin. He said, do not let the sun go down on that anger. And do not give the devil a foothold. So he qualifies, he says, in your anger, we must not sin when we become angry. And what he's saying is, don't carry it over. Don't, what are we going to do with it? It's what we do with it that becomes the sin. He said, do not let the sun set. Don't carry that anger into the night with you, or you will give the devil a foothold. And those of us that have gone to bed angry, remember, we know how we wake up the next morning. I ask a question in John chapter 2. Jesus arrives at the temple and they, he sees them selling things and money changes and selling pigeons and doves and animals in the temple. And he's so angry, he makes a cord of ropes and he whips them and he overturns the money tables. Was he angry? I believe he was. But the reason for his anger, he did not sin. It was the zeal for his father's house. So there is a thing that we can be angry, but we must not sin. Now, I heard a wonderful illustration of unforgiveness from a pastor one day. And he said, unforgiveness is like a glass of poison. He said, we want the other person to drink it and to feel the anger we feel. But instead, we drink it. And the more we drink this glass of poison, the worse we feel and the sicker we become and it appears as if the other person's got away scot-free and the, the more they just carry on with their lives as if nothing is wrong. That, and that, that is inclined to happen. And Paul says, or Jesus says, we must forgive. The question is, how can we forgive? I can't forgive someone who has really hurt me. How do I forgive them? I can't. Do you think Jesus chose and just wanted to forgive those Roman soldiers who'd hurt him? The word tells us that God has put his love, his agape love into our hearts. He says, love them with my love. You can't. But love them, and in that love, forgive them and release them. And then God says, you hand them over to me, you are freed, and they are handed over to me. And it says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So Paul says, don't hold on to that anger. Don't let it become sin in your life. I remember in my early ministry, very early, back in the early 1980s, I was in ministry in the Cape. And I remember in that ministry, in the first two months of ministry, I prayed for three elderly people. And they all died within 24 hours. I was eventually petrified. I was too scared to pray for anyone because they died within 24 hours. But when I went back and looked at all three of those cases, I remember going through a prayer of repentance and forgiveness with each one of them. They all, in their old age, very one was even in his 90s, they had all carried a grudge. And they were carrying that grudge. And God, a God of mercy and grace, wanted to forgive them. And I believe that as they came to forgiveness and repentance, he forgave them and they could come to peace. So in your anger, Paul says, don't sin. Do not carry it over. Don't let the sun set on that anger. And do not give the devil a foothold. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, what a, what a wonderful thing to come under your word and the instruction of your word, to hear Jesus, your son, teaching us how to pray. 
to hear Paul admonishing us that in our anger not to sin. We can be angry because we, we are made to be angry like your son, Father. But we must, it's what we do with that anger. And Lord, many of us are sitting with unforgiveness, we're brooding, we're angry with the world, angry with a father, a grandfather, a brother, a partner who has hurt or wronged, a wife or a husband who has wronged us. And you call us, you said, even your enemies, you have to forgive them. It's a command. Forgive them and release them. I will deal with them, but you will get better eventually. And so, Father, teach us each humbly in our own way, in our own lives, to learn to forgive as you forgave us, as you forgave us from that cross, Lord Jesus, and said, Father, they don't know what they're doing. So thank you that we can find and give forgiveness in this world that you created. Bless each one of us today, strengthen each one of us, and Lord, help each one of us to make it a task of this day to go back into our lives and forgive each and every one that has hurt us, even our enemies, and pray for them so that you may bless us. Thank you for everything. Be with us, our families, and may this be a good week for us as we come out of lockdown. Lord, bless each one in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Over and out.